Good afternoon and welcome back everyone to our November trading summit. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play and we are going to kick off this month with a review of the core option strategies that if you are utilizing options in your portfolio, you should be mastering and learning how to utilize these strategies for your portfolio to enhance your strategies. We're going to go through what strategies you should focus on, what strategies you should be uh, using nearly every single day in your portfolios, what strategies you should use only when you have certain uh, outlooks in the overall market or certain views in the market, and how you can utilize these strategies and best practices throughout the month of November and learning them to enhance your portfolio. So this is really uh, a, a session both for someone who's brand new to options trading, who's looking to figure out where do you start in terms of option strategies. There are 45 plus option strategies that you can trade. Where should you be focusing your attention on? Where should you be uh, putting your energy into uh, you know, implementing these strategies in your portfolio? where you should be looking at um, strategies that are more tactical, ones that you only use in certain scenarios. That's what we're going to review for those of you that are brand new. For those of you that are already trading option strategies or already trading options in your portfolio, this is meant to give you, again, a clear guide as to when should you be uh, using certain strategies, which ones you should be focusing on from a, from a weekly and daily perspective, which ones you should be focusing on on certain market conditions, what those conditions are, and making sure you have a good grasp on all of that as you implement option strategies in your portfolio. Now, a reminder, what we do here every single Thursday and what we're doing here today is designed to help you is to help you trade sustainably and confidently. And the idea here with our Thursday education sessions is that we are focused on making sure that you have access to the right education and the right tools to allow you to consistently and confidently grow your account in the long run with options as a component of that. And that's really what we're here to explore this particular month as to which option strategies will actually help you achieve those objectives and what are the best practices for each of those strategies so that you can implement them and have access to the tools that can allow you to achieve the goals of each individual strategy. Now, before we get started, what we are going to discuss here today is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any of the specific strategies that we might use as example purposes during today's session. So, Today, what we're going to cover is, first of all, I want to lay out what my goals are for the November Trading Summit, what I want to make sure that you're going to learn today and what you're going to learn over the next few trading sessions. We're going to cover three levels of option strategies. The first one we're going to cover is income. And I'm going to show you why this is the one strategy that you should be focused on every single day, regardless of what the market conditions are, what the market is doing. You should be focused on and consistently generating income in your portfolio because this is a strategy that should be at the core or the foundation of your understanding and your options portfolio. Then we'll talk about risk reduction. How options can help you reduce risk and actually improve your odds of success on every single trade, whether that's a tactical trade or a long-term investment. How options can help you reduce your risk both passively and actively. What you can do from a passive perspective, if you're just trying to reduce your risk you know, on a consistent basis, and what you can do when you really think markets are about to fall apart or concerned about the markets, how you can get far more active and get protection in your portfolio. And then lastly, we'll talk about tactical trading. When you have a bullish or bearish view on a specific stock, ETF, or overall market, how can you take advantage of that by utilizing option strategies and reducing your risk when you take those opportunistic trades? And then we'll discuss, we'll talk about the different strategies for each one of these three levels before we open this up for Q&A here at the very end. But the primary thing that I want you to be able to walk away from today's session is a clear understanding as to what are the core option strategies that I should focus on to enhance my portfolio, where you should be focusing your learning attention on, because the thing that I have learned over the past 
18 years of doing this as a market strategist is that a lot of traders, uh, you know, you learn about options, you hear stories of people making tons of money trading options. You might've heard stories of people losing tons, losing tons of money trading options. Where should you be focusing your attention on? There are so many different option strategies that you can trade within each option strategy. There's so many var varieties of how do you trade those individual strategies? How do you learn what you should focus on? That's what I'm hoping to achieve here during the month of November is to clearly define what uh, what your objectives are and how to uh, you know, start your learning process, either whether you're brand new or you're, or you're still, you're trading options today and you want to learn how to focus your attention because perhaps you haven't achieved the success that you're looking for and you're trying to figure out how to go about doing so. So many of you are options place subscribers, members. I've seen many of you have already chimed into the chat window telling us you know, where you're from. If this is your first time joining us here at Options Play, please type your name and your where you're from in the chat window, whether you're joining us from this afternoon, this evening, in the morning, no matter where you are in the world, please feel free to chime into the chat window. Let us know that you are here, where you're from, um, and welcome if this is your first time joining us here at Options Play. Um, the common question that I get is, are these sessions recorded? Can I get access to the slides? And the answers are yes and yes, they are both recorded and you can have access to the slides. You just have to either be a member here at Options Play or sign up for your free 30-day trial at optionsplay.com slash sign up or point your phone to that QR code on your screen. And Philip, just drop the link here into the chat window. If you're joining us for the first time, this will give you access to the recording and the slides, but more importantly, throughout the entire month of November, as you join us for these sessions, I'm going to be showing you some of the tools we offer here at Options Play that will help you automate and help you implement the strategies that we're going to be teaching you throughout the month of, of November. We're going to be teaching you best practices. We'll show you how our platform helps you implement those best practices, and you can get that all for free for the next 30 days by simply signing up for that free trial. That will give you access to the slides and the recording and the platform. So if this is your joining us for the first time, welcome. I hope that this is the start of a fruitful journey for you with regards to learning how to trade options in your portfolio. And I hope that you join us here throughout the entire month of November, just like our members will be doing. So let me start off by talking about what my goals are. And our goals consistently month after month, week after week, is to empower you to grow your trading account consistently and confidently. And we obviously do it in the context of options. Now, keep in mind that whenever we're trading options, options are a derivative on the equity products themselves, which means that we can't ignore the stocks and ETFs that you're trading options on. But we really try to help you navigate not only the options side of things, but also the equity side of things. Um, so what we're going to focus here on this particular month with regards to how we help you achieve that consistency and confidence, uh, confidence in your portfolio are two-pronged approach. Number one is income generation, and number two is risk management. When you can achieve both of these objectives, you are very well on your way to helping you consistently grow your account and doing so in a way where you're confident in your strategy to do so. So income generation, we're gonna talk about core strategies that can add income and downside protection to your portfolio, which is going to increase your probability of success on every investment. It's incremental gains that you get, but it's something that you do day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, and that's gonna help you achieve those incremental consistent gains in your portfolio. The second thing we're gonna do is help you with risk management, reducing volatility in your portfolio and adding tactical trades when it makes sense to either protect your portfolio against market volatility or simply harness that volatility and take advantage of directional views that you have in the market. Chairman Powell made an announcement yesterday. We saw big moves in the market yesterday, big moves in the market today. How do you take advantage of that utilizing options? How can you leverage your portfolio when markets make big moves, but at the same time reduce your risk on the other flip side of it? That's really the convexity that options provide you with. That's usually what brings a lot of investors 
to look at options for the first time, but we really want to make sure that you understand of where between these two uh, sides of the equation, where do you find balance? Where should you focus your attention on the majority of the time? And when do you pull these uh, skill sets out when the market timing is um, is right for it? Okay, and that's really what we want to try to decipher during this month of November. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type one into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Okay, so let's talk about income. This is really where you need to spend most of your time because income is going to help you generate a consistent income stream. And what we're going to focus on this month is understanding the strategies and best practices that actually add this consistent yield to your portfolio. And this is going to be really important because the income stream will, will provide multiple benefits. We talked about growing our portfolio. The income stream is going to be a pretty significant part of how to consistently grow your portfolio over time. But we're also going to see how that income yield is going to help you reduce portfolio volatility because the income is going to help dampen any volatility that you experience in the portfolio, whether uh, you know wh whether it's a small correction in the market or a larger correction, that income stream is going to help offset any volatility we experience in the uh, market, especially when you can generate a fairly significant income stream. And this is really where I see a lot of investors kind of um, sh not shy away, but almost um, deprioritize income as a vehicle or, or a tool for options trading because there are sexier versions of, of option strategies that you might want to trade because you are going for hitting home runs. You want to know how can I turn my $100 trade into a $500 trade. You, we've all seen uh, people on, on, on the internet boosting how they've turned you know, $100 into $500 on a single trade or made a few hundred or a few thousand percent return using options. And that's all sexy. And, and that's what we're sometimes what, what we're after. But it's really the unsexy st stuff that is the foundation or should be the foundation of helping you grow your account. That sexy stuff will come. You will have those opportunities, but those things are not going to be the underlying driver of how you generate uh, yield and how you grow your portfolio in the long run. Income is really what's going to help you achieve that objective. But it's also important to understand the trade-offs with that income. What trade-offs do you have with generating income and how can you maximize the benefits and minimize kind of the impacts or the trade-offs that you have to make in order to generate that income? And that's really what we focus a lot of our attention here at Options Play. The research that we provide, the tools that we provide you with are really focused on that trade-off opportunity because we all want income, but what trade-offs are we making for that income? And we need to make sure we understand what those trade-offs are and how to balance it so that we can maximize an income for our portfolio. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type two into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. So when it comes to income generation, like I said, this is really kind of the least sexy part of options trading, right? When we think about options trading, we think about, you know, how do I uh, buy call options, buy out of the money call options, zero days to expiration call options, and basically leverage my capital and try to make a huge return. There are, there's a time and place for that, but that's not what's going to generate consistent growth in your portfolio. There are, like I said, th there are plenty of times to do that, but what you need to focus on most actively in your portfolio with regards to options are income generating strategies. These are systematic strategies that simply require a basic understanding of option concepts. That's it. And specifically what I mean by that is that you don't need to time the markets with these options income generation strategies. You don't need to have a strong view as to markets are going to go higher or lower or keep uh, tabs on what Chairman Powell is doing, what the bond market is doing. These types of strategies are systematic strategies that you basically do day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out. It's the same strategy. You don't change it. You consistently do it month after month. And when you do that, you can easily generate two to three times 
the income compared to the dividend yield of your current portfolio. If you have, let's say, index funds in your portfolio and you have SPY or QQQ, and that makes up the majority of kind of your portfolio or a similar type of portfolio uh, a constitution, you know, you're looking at maybe one and a half percent yield in your portfolio. And maybe for those of you that are more dividend dividend focused, you might be seeing three to four percent, perhaps pushing five percent in terms of yield in your portfolio. How can you double that? How can you triple that at a minimum to offset the the volatility that you experience in your portfolio? That's what income generation can do for you. Most investors actually don't realize how much income you are missing out by not taking this kind of systematic strategy in your portfolio. And like I said, it's a type of strategy where you don't need to stay on top of the markets. You don't need to have a strong view of where the markets are going. It's the type of strategy that you will do day in and day out, whether you're in a bull market or a bear market or a sideways market. These are the strategies that help you generate a consistent income stream that's going to help you uh, you know, stay on track with regards to your goals to grow your portfolio. And this is really where automation kind of really helps keep you on track because these are the most systematic strategies. They don't require any type of um, active management. They don't require any form of, of having a view in the markets. This is just simply a mechanical strategy that you have to follow a set of rules. And when you're able to follow the set of rules, most investors actually are surprised at how much yield they can potentially generate using these strategies and just how much income they're losing or rather not taking into their account by not utilizing these types of systematic strategies. Does that make sense? Please type three into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And at, and at the core of all of this is one strategy that if you have an options account, you are approved for, which is a covered call. Now, I'm not going to go dive deep into cover calls today because that's not the purpose of today's session. We're going to cover, uh, we're going to have a separate session just on cover calls alone because this is a strategy that every single one of you, if you have an options account, you are eligible to trade. Every other option strategy that we'll talk about here throughout the session, you have to you have to get approval for that. Some of you, most of you are probably approved for most of these strategies, but not everyone is. But everyone that has an options account is approved to sell cover calls, which is why it should be the basis or the foundation of your portfolio. And when done correctly, you will achieve a minimum of two to three times the dividend yield that you currently generate in your portfolio. And many of you might be generating less than half, one and a half percent in terms of dividend yield. So how can you add an additional five, six percent minimum annualized? Minimum. I'm not many portfolios will see significantly more than that in terms of yield selling cover calls. How can that income stream go towards uh, helping you consistently grow your account. We're going to cover that during this month's session. But this is really, you know, the least sexy stuff is really the stuff that you should be doing day in and day out. And that's how you consistently grow your account over time. Okay. Let's now talk a little bit about risk management. So income is where you need to focus most of your attention on risk management is kind of second uh, is what comes next and there's really two forms of risk management there's passive and there's active passive is actually something that you are almost already doing by selling cover calls and, and generating income in your portfolio because the income stream that you generate from these income generating strategies now, cover call is one strategy. There are multiple income generating strategies that you can implement on your portfolio. It's not just cover calls, but there are multiple strategies that you can implement in your portfolio that provide what we call passive risk reduction. This is increasing the probability of success and, and reducing portfolio volatility by collecting income, whether you're selling cover calls, whether you're selling cash secured puts, whether you're selling more advanced strategies like iron condors, credit spreads, strangles, straddles, butterflies. These are all income uh, strategies that help reduce your overall portfolio volatility and increase your probability of success on the investments that you make in your portfolio. So that's what we call passive 
uh, risk management. And the, and the great thing about passive risk management is that most of the strategies that you can implement will be doing so where it doesn't cost you anything. You're not risking uh, anything additional in order to uh, reduce the risk in your overall portfolio. On the flip side to that, you have active risk reduction. This is really where you have a specific view in the markets. You're concerned about market volatility. You're concerned about the markets uh, selling off. And you want to take an active approach in protecting your portfolio. Think of it like buying an insurance contract on your portfolio. You're concerned that the value of your portfolio is going to fall. And you want to take an active approach in buying a insurance a contract, uh, and it's obviously not an actual insurance contract, but it acts very similar to an insurance contract that basically offsets any significant declines. Now, the challenge there is when do you, or rather the challenge is the fact that the insurance contracts are very expensive when you t tend to need them. And you need to be very tactical about when do you buy it? When do you kind of, uh, basically decide that you no longer need insurance, that very much uh, has a huge weight into the success of those strategies. So the active management part requires active management. It requires you to stay on top of when do you buy that insurance policy? When do you get rid of that policy so that you're only buying insurance during the slivers of time where you feel you need it? And hopefully during that period of time, you actually get the protection that you need. Because if you don't end up needing that protection, the cost of that insurance is quite costly. So you don't want to be insured all the time the same way you do with your car or your home. Portfolio insurance is expensive. You tend to only buy it when you absolutely think you're going to need it. And just like income, there are trade-offs with these types of risk management um, strategies, whether you are... Um, most of the passive risk reduction strategies don't increase risk in your portfolio, but there are ones that do. So it's important to understand when do you utilize those strategies? When do you, um, uh, you know, take those passive opportunities to reduce uh, risk in your portfolio? The active side is really kind of the, the, the there's a huge trade off with these active strategies, mostly in the, in the form of the cost of that insurance. So we want to make sure you understand um, the timing around uh, buying that active insurance, you know, understanding these trade-offs with, with everything that we're going to discuss throughout the month of October, uh, I'm sorry, the month of November, there's going to be trade-offs. And what our job here at Options Play is to help you understand those trade-offs so you can make the right decision for your portfolio as to what is the right trade-off for you. What is the right level of protection? What is the right cost? And make sure that you don't Either take out insurance that's too costly, uh, or insurance that's not uh, that doesn't provide enough protection. You know, because it's one, it's very dangerous to understand the strategy but not understand how to implement it well, both on the income side as well on the risk management side. So when we refer to risk man risk management, you know, there's there's both passive and actively managed strategies that will provide anywhere from mild to very aggressive downside protection. And typically this is used during times of market volatility. But like I said, the active strategies are the most costly ones and require very strict active management of those strategies. And this is really where we start to layer in other skill sets to help you actively ma manage risk in your portfolio. Predominantly, it's going to be around technical analysis, which is going to help you with market timing. So when you think about, I have concerns about the economy, I have concerns about the market, but you only want to make sure that you buy insurance kind of when you need it and make sure that you kind of get rid of that policy as soon as you don't need it. Market timing and technical analysis is going to help you improve your chances of success with these types of strategies. So in the income, um, uh, the level one where we're talking about income, the only skill set that you really need is a basic understanding of options. As you start talking about risk management, you're going to start thinking about risk management. You're going to start thinking about um, technical analysis as well. So there's a secondary layer of skill set that you kind of have to start learning in order to improve your success with risk management techniques using options. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type four into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And we're progressing this purposely along these lines is because we want to show you where do you focus most of your attention on that requires kind of the least amount of 
skill in order to do so, or least amount of learning, if you will, in order to get started? Where do you start next? And where do you kind of have to improve your skills in order to kind of achieve the next level of, of enhancement? And then lastly, the third one, um, which is tactical trading. This is really where you know, this is really kind of the sexy part of options trading. But this is actually, in my opinion, especially for those of you that are brand new to options trading, this is what you tackle last. And unfortunately, I see most traders, especially for those of you that are beginners starting out with options trading, this is where you start first. Uh, but this is actually arguably the hardest part. And this is really the part that you should be using um, only when the timing is right. Um, you know, a lot of traders will kind of use this every single day. They're constantly trying to find ideas in the markets, try, constantly trying to, to push uh, opportunities. But, you know, when I when I look at traders and I look at traders that are successful, these are the ones that you use most sparingly because they are only useful when you have a specific view in the market and you're trying to express that view. And not every single day do you feel that the timing is right to take a directional view on the market. You have to be tactical. You have to wait for the right timing for these types of trades. So this is really where it's important for you to understand that. So when we're trading bullish and bearish markets, uh, it's understanding, number one, what strategies are best to trade tactically, but also understand from a timing perspective when it's best to utilize these strategies. So you're layering multiple skill sets in order to understand how to tactically trade. But we all have views in the markets, whether it's on the underlying stock, whether it's an ETF, whether it's broader markets, we all have views and we want to express those views and try to profit from those views. Tactical trading with regards to options allow you to do that. And specifically, it allows you to do it for both bullish and bearish markets and even neutral markets. You know, that's really the, the really cool part about options trading is that no matter what your outlook is, whether you think the stock's going to make a big fast move in a short amount of time, or it's not going to move at all over the next three months, or you think volatility is going to get higher, or you think volatility is going to get lower, there is a way to express that view using uh, options. But like I said, this requires you to learn very specific skill sets for each individual type of strategy. Um, and when you use them correctly, you're going to be able to risk less to make more. Um, this allows you to kind of capture what we call the convexity of options trading. You know, uh, stock trading is symmetrical. It's, you know, for every dollar, you know exactly for every dollar you can make, you can risk one dollar. It's linear in terms of how much money you can make or lose. So it's very easy to understand. But options it has convex, meaning how much money you can make can accelerate in certain instances and how much you can lose can reduce um, in certain instances. It's important to understand how to harness that convexity because what you want is that when the market goes in the direction you expect it to, you, your, your, your profits grow at an exponential rate, but at the same time, when the market goes against you, your risk is reduced uh, exponentially. How do you harness that? That's really kind of the complexity of options that you learn is this convexity. How do you harness that convexity? How can you maximize it so that when the trade goes in the direction you expect it to, you get that exponential growth? And if the trade doesn't go against, it doesn't go in the direction to, you reduce your risk as much as possible. And that is the primary trade-off that you're learning with regards to tactical trading, is how do you harness this convexity and what are the best practices for each individual strategy that helps you maximize that convexity to work in your favor. Um, and that is something that takes a lot more time to really learn. We'll, we will uh, kind of... Um, have an introductory uh, lesson into kind of understanding these strategies, understanding the trade-offs and best practices for each one. But it is just an introductory lesson with regards to tactical trading. We will do a more in-depth on income and risk management. But with tactical trading, we usually, um, for example, last month or, or rather um the month of September, I did a whole uh, I did a whole session on or a whole month on tactical trading. You know, how do you go from single leg to multi leg to three to four legs? You know, what are the trade offs with each one? Um, so, for those of you that uh, you know have a membership or you're starting your free trial, I recommend if you're interested in more learning about tactical trading, 
take some time and review the September summit because that's what we focus an entire month on. But that's really kind of the in-depth topic on tactical trading because it requires both options knowledge, technical analysis, and sometimes even requires some fundamental analysis. Tactical trading requires the most skill set in order to even attempt to trade it. And more important than that, mindset and risk management is the best predictor of your ability to be profitable as a tactical trader. You know, while the options knowledge, the technical analysis, and sometimes the fundamental analysis is required, that alone is not enough to be a profitable trader. What we find uh, in my 18 years of doing this, the best predictor of someone being able to be profitable as a tactical trader is not how, how well they know their options or technical analysis, even though those skill sets help. It's really their mindset of how they approach trading and how they manage risk in their portfolios that dictate whether they're going to be a successful trader or not. And it requires you to suffer through periods of wins and losses. So emotionally, it's not a, a, as easy to deal with versus income. You know, it's a systematic strategy that, you know, as you do, as long as you follow the systematic strategy, you're going to generate that consistent income in your portfolio. Tactical trading, there are ups and downs of tactical trading. So the ability to, to weather through those ups and, ups and downs is really what uh, separates successful traders from everyone else. And portfolio tools that we have here at Options Play, the idea generation tools that we have here at Options Play, are designed to help you execute and, and, and trade the plan that you have for these types of strategies. We help you set up a plan, um, but more importantly, uh, it's the follow through of that plan that dictates whether you're going to be successful at this type of trading or not. So, you know, as you go through this, you know, you're going to learn about vertical spreads. You're going to learn about, you know, more advanced strategies. What I'm hoping to do here today is to give you a good sense of where do you focus most of your attention? You know, where do you start with regards to options trading? You know, because I see a lot of traders jump into the deep end, try to get into vertical spreads, get into other types of strategies, while those are uh, useful strategies when you have a directional view. And we all have directional views in the market. So it's important that we know how to leverage those views utilizing options. But what I'm trying to advocate for is for you to start on the shallow end of the pool. Build the knowledge base that you need to consistently grow your portfolio using a systematic strategy like income strategies. And by doing so, you're also going to learn a lot more about kind of option, how options work, how options contracts change and evolve over time. And, has, and when the markets move up and down, how that influences the value of an option, because that's the knowledge you're going to need as you, uh, you know, uh, graduate into managing risk, reducing risk in your portfolio, because you know, there's two ways, or rather, there's two components to growing a portfolio. There's the growth side of things, but there's also the downside protection of things, right? Because you can consistently grow your portfolio, but if you don't manage your risk properly, you can give up all of those gains very easily by not managing that downside risk. So it's about kind of progression, progressing your way through the core option strategies and what... Um, what is the order of, of operation that you should be following in your portfolio to kind of get yourself to the point where you can say, I'm confident in my abilities to grow my portfolio. And if you follow these three steps, uh, you know, you will have a much higher chance of succeeding with your uh, goal of growing your account, utilizing options in your portfolio. And to be perfectly honest, there are many traders that go from step one to step two that never really graduate to step three, and that is okay. You don't need to trade tactically in the markets in order to use options and grow your portfolio. You can very much be a very happy investor buying stocks and ETFs, utilizing strategies like cover calls, cash secured puts, occasionally maybe using a credit spread, sometimes buying some protection in your portfolio when you feel that you actively need it. And that's really all you do with options trading. There's nothing that 
says that you have to trade uh, you know, spreads or trade debit spreads or credit spreads. There are many people that do, and there are many people that enjoy it and love doing it and kind of have the wherewithal and the time and the efforts and energy to, to invest to do those types of strategies, but not everyone does. So, you know, this is a this is a session not only to help you understand the progression, but also understand perhaps where you know, you can stop and, you know, say, I'm okay with just generating income and, and, and ma maybe managing a little risk. And I don't need to be a tactical trader. I don't need to be an active trader sitting in front of, you know, two screens in order to figure out what I want to trade for the day. I'm okay just, you know, generating income and I'm happy doing that. And for many of you, that's, and for, I would I say, actually, for a good portion of you, that's really all you need in your portfolio. Um, so, Hopefully this gives you a clear understanding of kind of what the roadmap should look like and also give you an understanding of perhaps where in that roadmap is enough for yourself and your portfolio and kind of your needs for your portfolio. I hope that makes sense, everyone. Please type five into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And I would say that that's probably more important than anything else that I want to achieve out of this session is that you know, the, the roadmap is there, but it doesn't mean that everyone has to go through every single part of that roadmap, right? It's just about where do you start and, and perhaps also where do you end? And I hope that this kind of gives you some insight. And as we go through each module this month, I think you will naturally kind of understand where uh, which ones you need to be focused on. You know, certainly income is something that I advocate everyone should be focused on. It doesn't matter whether you uh, are um, interested in options or not, to be perfectly honest, options should be a part of your portfolio from an income generation perspective. Because think about it, as an investor, you capture dividends as, as income. So even though you might say that options aren't part of my portfolio, income is part of your portfolio, whether it takes a small uh, <clears throat> weight in your portfolio or a large weight in your portfolio, income is in some way, shape, or form a part of everyone's portfolio. So what options allow you to do is actually control that income stream uh, and generate a fairly substantial income stream in your investments. And that's why I think at least step one is something that everyone should be taking. Step two and step three, it depends on kind of your own personal needs as to whether or not you do end up taking step two and step three. But we will go over each one so that you can make that decision yourself during this month of November. So what we covered here today are the core option strategies. What are step one, step two, step three, where you should be on that spectrum, where you are today, where do you want to progress to, hopefully giving you that roadmap for that. Next month, next week, what I want to do is supercharge your portfolio with income. So really talking about the core strategy as to how you uh, go about doing so, um, adding at least two to three times the income level on your portfolio. This is the lesson for everyone. Whether you're sort of interested in options or not, this is the strategy that everyone should be learning how to use in your portfolio. Because like I said, it doesn't require, you know, knowledge on the markets, timing the markets, a view on the markets. Adding two to three times income in your portfolio will bring incremental gains to helping you grow your portfolio in the long run. I think everyone here is interested in the very least in growing your portfolio. And that's what supercharging your portfolio with income will help you achieve that objective. And then what we'll do is we will graduate to trading strategies to grow your account, as well as risk management techniques to help you grow your account in week three and week four. So um, that's what we're going to cover here during the month of November. I hope that you'll be able to join me here. We obviously have Thanksgiving sort of towards the end of the month. And at the very last session, we are that session is still to be determined. And the reason for that um, uh, is because my wife is expected to deliver our second child sort of in that time frame at the end of November, beginning of December. So I may be out on paternity leave by the uh, last week of November. So Jessica will likely be covering for me for that session, but her and I have already discussed what she will be covering for that last session if I'm not going to be here. So um, that's why, you know, the last session at the moment is still to be determined uh, just because of that. Please. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I really appreciate that. So before we jump over to Q&A,
Just a reminder, if you want access to today's recording and slides, you can get access to it completely free of charge by simply signing up for a free 30-day trial to Options Play. If you're already a member or you're currently on a free trial, you will get an email with the recording and the slides immediately after today's session. Um, but starting next week, when we start talking about how to supercharge your portfolio, um, utilizing income, how do we then move on to tactical trading strategies, we're going to dive into the portfolio, the options play tool. Because like I said, the most important thing that you're really learning from us is what are the trade-offs of these strategies? These strategies are conceptually fairly easy to understand, but it's the trade-offs, meaning how much income do you want versus what trade-offs do you have to make? That's the difficult part. And that's the part that's many times complex about options. So our goal here at Options Play with our platform is to reduce that complexity and make it super simple for you to understand how you can implement the strategies that we teach directly in your portfolio. And our tools are designed to help you do that. So when you sign up for your free 30-day trial, you will get access to those tools as long uh, alongside with your recording and slides, which is going to help you um, follow along during the next few sessions and help you implement what you're going to learn during those sessions. So I hope that you'll be able to join me next week for that session. And uh, because like I said, um, that's really the session that everyone here should be participating on, even if you don't progress to the following sessions or not ready to progress to the following sessions just yet. So with that, let's jump over to the Q&A section. Now, there is both a chat window and a Q&A window at the bottom of your screen. If you can type your questions in the Q&A window, I'll try to answer as many questions as I possibly can out of the Q&A window before I have to run for today's session. Um, Frank is saying, how do I get a recording? I'm a member. So Frank, you will automatically get an email after today's session with that recording, both the slides and the recording if you are a member. Um, what percentage of one's portfolio should be allocated to income generation strategies? So Colin, um, the income generating strategies are are for are you know are used on stocks that you already own in your portfolio. So as far as what percentage of your portfolio is going to be allocated to equities, you know that kind of changes as your risk profile changes as you get older. You generally allocate less and less towards equities. So that's more of a question I would say more for kind of for your financial advisor or planner that helps you understand what is the right mixture of asset allocation in your portfolio. You know, usually when you're starting out in your 20s, you are allocating nearly 70, 80% of your portfolio to equities. And as you get into your 50s and 60s, that reduces down to 30, 40% as you have a more uh, higher fixed income um, <clears throat> portfolio. So that is the part that I can't uh, answer for you just because I don't know much about your kind of personal uh, investment um, um objectives from that perspective, but whatever percentage of your portfolio is allocated to equities, that is what you will allocate to income generation for options trading. Because the options because the options strategies are on the bait on the back of your equity positions. Um, what, however large your equity uh, portfolios are, uh, that's the portion of your portfolio that we can help you generate two to three times the dividend yield on that equity uh, portion of your portfolio. So that was a long answer, but hopefully that answers your question, Colin. Josephine is asking, do you have any recommended readings or videos that would be useful to get approved for level three to four options uh, trading? So Josephine, um, you know, our options play YouTube channel has a ton of videos on kind of more advanced strategies, level three, level four. I actually just did one for the, for the month of September um, where we host the session on how to uh, generate um, or how to level up your options into those more advanced strategies. As far as you know, recommended reading, there's a there's a fantastic book called The Options Playbook by Brian Overby. It's a pretty old book now. It's probably ten to uh, a minimum fifteen years old at this point. Um, <clears throat> a great book to kind of dive into kind of the more advanced strategies that breaks down each strategy, you know, what the objectives are, what your risks are, how to calculate break even prices. Um, that's a good place in terms of reading if you're interested. Um, and Philip, maybe if you could please um, drop a link to our YouTube channel for Josephine uh, so that she can watch those advanced videos. 
Uh, Colin's uh, point about the daily play not including income recommendations is a very good point because that's actually something we're in the process of adding. We're adding kind of a new grading signal news uh, po uh, portion of, uh, of your membership, which is going to be focused on income, helping you understand uh, these types of strategies, best practices, on, on you know implementing these strategies, managing these strategies. So we are in the process of adding that income uh, <clears throat> part of our of our newsletter and the recommendations that we put out. Uh, what city is that outside of your window? The city is New York City. Um, that is a virtual background. That is not a real background. Um, but that is New York City where our company is based. Is there a better time based on the underlying equity behavior at the time for cover calls? Do you still do cover calls and the underlying equity is down? Great question. And this is what I meant by income generating strategies are a systematic strategy that you should be do using all the time. Here's the thing. Can you improve the returns on a cover call if you are tactical about it, both from a market timing perspective and waiting for the right volatility conditions? The answer is yes, you can. But if you but if you only wait for those when the conditions are right, then you are only eligible for generating income probably somewhere in the 25, 30% of the time, which means that you're missing out on income the other 70% of the time. And what we have found is that while you can uh, get better results by waiting, but when you lose out on 70% of the income, you actually come out worse uh, are, are behind by kind of trying to time the right time to, to sell a cover call. Not to mention, sometimes your timing can be off. And what that means is that you're, uh, you're not only by, you're not only uh, losing out on 60, 70% of the income that you could be collecting, you're also at the same time not fully optimizing for the best times. We're just saying that even when you're able to uh, in hindsight, say, okay, these are the best times to sell cover calls. Could I have made more money doing so? The short answer to your question is absolutely, but it's not worth waiting for those conditions because when you when you lose out on 60, 70% of the income uh, on the other times that you're waiting on for the right conditions, you actually just lose out on income and that doesn't serve anyone in the long run. So that's why the, the income generating strategies are systematic strategies that don't require you to time the markets. Just like how, you know, if you think about long-term investments, dollar cost averaging doesn't require you to time the markets. It requires you to buy every single month. It's one of the best strategies to perform in the long run. It doesn't require timing. That's the same thing with income generating strategies. When you're selling cover calls, selling cash secured puts, what you want to be doing is doing it all the time, generating income all the time, because by generating income all the time, that's how you're going to be able to generate that consistency and helping you grow your account in the long run. Is selling short-term weekly puts a good income strategy for the November rally? Um, so Jim, I would say that if you are at the point where you feel that you can be tactical about your options selling, your, rather your income generating strategies, um, that just means that you've gotten to a point where you've mastered the strategy and you're now at trying to fine tune that strategy. So as far as should you do that, the question is really, are you at the point where you feel that you've you're very comfortable selling puts. You understand the risk with selling puts. You understand the strategy with selling puts. And you're now trying to fine tune your ability to generate higher yields by being tactical and doing shorter dated options. If you feel that you're at that point, then the short answer to your question is absolutely. But if you're at, if you're saying you're just starting out with selling puts and you're just learning about selling puts, I would say don't move around the expiration dates, start with something longer dated because you're going to have a lot more control over, uh, you know, short-term movements with that. So it really just depends on how comfortable you are with income generation strategies that you are now at the point where you can fine tune it by adjusting strike prices, adjusting expiration dates based on your understanding of the markets. <clears throat> 
Uh, what are the charges for options play after the free trial period? We're actually, um, it, it's $100 a month for, um, a uh, hundred dollars a month for options play, seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, a year. But we are currently running some discounts on that. So if you are interested, please send us an email at info at optionsplay com, and we can set you up with that. Can you reckon a, recommend a few good dividend producing stocks that we can use for this strategy? Walter, we'll be covering that during next week's session. We'll be showing you how we screen for ideas to sell cover calls, cash secured puts, and where you're going to generate the most yield using these strategies and how you can do it very easily using the options play platform. Uh, Mike, your question about bond yields, I will be covering that during my Monday morning macro outlook session. So please join me. If you have a membership, you have a free trial, you get invited to our Monday morning macro outlook session. I send you my chart book every single morning that covers all the asset classes, equities, bonds, commodities, currencies, my views on them, including all the individual sectors and trade ideas. That's included in your membership. So Mike, uh, uh, yeah, Mike, I hope that you join us on Monday where I will give you an update on my views for bond yields after Chairman Powell's um, announcement this week. Why do the financial investors do not use the option strategies because they make one time and lose it all next? Um, so that's what I mean with regards to, you know, tactical strategies are kind of the last frontier, if you will, with regards to trading. I find a lot of traders that kind of are in that position where you say they jump in one time and they lose it all. It's because they're not they're not starting in the right place. They're jumping right to level three from the very beginning and saying, hey, I, I saw someone, you know, turn $100 into $1,000 by buying some short dated call options. They don't really understand call options. They don't understand how, how volatility affects, how time, how the underlying effects that call option and they jump into it and they lose money and they say, this is not for me. Well, I mean, that's sort of like trying to like ski for the first time on the black diamond and falling your way through it and saying skiing is not for me. You're just starting in the wrong place. And, you know, obviously you're likely going to get hurt if you start in the wrong place or, or, or lose money uh, that you don't. And not only do you lose money, you don't understand why you lose money. And, that, and, for, and obviously you're not going to continue doing that. Right. So, that's part of what I'm hoping to achieve during today's session is for many of you that are you know, thinking about starting options trading or currently trading options trading to think about where did you start your journey? Are you starting in the right places? Are you kind of mastering the, the, the first thing first, then moving your and progressing your way correctly through the, through the chain? Because unless you do that, you're going to probably have a pretty tough time if you start on level three, which is what I find a lot of people do because that's the sexy part. That's the part that you hear someone turns $100 into $1,000 and you want that, right? Who doesn't want to turn $100 into $1,000? Everyone wants that. But in order to even have the opportunity to do that, you got to you gotta start somewhere more basic. And that's really what I'm hoping to achieve during today's session. I'm not approved to trade options on my trading platform. Do I need to be approved before I'm able to use options play? You're not, you're not uh, going to need to be approved in order to use options play, but you're going to have, you're not going to get a lot of value of options play if you're not approved for options trading. But like I said, you know, there's nothing, you know, doing an options application these days is pretty simple, right? Many times just a couple of clicks uh, of a mouse. Um, everyone's going to get approved for level one, right? So, you know, income will be where you want to start. So even if you don't get approved for level two or level three or level four, start with level one. That's where you should start. That's where you're going to be able to generate consistent yield in your portfolio. That's where you're going to really kind of build a little bit of confidence, your ability to kind of grow your portfolio consistently and confidently. And once you build that confidence, then you move on to level two, then you move on to level three. Do you suggest stop losses on all cover calls? I don't suggest stop losses on any cover calls. I think cover calls, is, it's it's by definition covered. So you don't have you know unlimited losses. You don't need a, a stop loss in my opinion. Um, if you are thinking about a stop loss because you want to at some point you know gain participation in the stock because it's rallying too much, that's something you can do, Michael, but you know that really comes back to the trade-off question, right? You know, if you find that your 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 cover calls are being stopped out fairly often, then I think that what you need to uh, re uh, evaluate 
is kind of what trade-offs you're making for your income. Because I think then your trade-off mix is off because you really should be very, very, very infrequently have your cover calls be quote unquote stopped out. Um, you should really have very few cover calls even be called the way. Um, so that's really kind of where trade-off is the the devil is in the details of the trade-offs that you're making. And I would suggest that you reevaluate what trade-offs you're making. Um, because if you have the right mixture of trade-offs, you really shouldn't need stop losses in your cover calls, in my opinion. Um, kindly update the portfolio tab. Once you close out the trade, no idea of account PL entering portfolio is also challenging. So we, you know, one of the things that we are actively working on is auto updating your portfolio. Um, we are, we're working on multiple portfolio integrations at the time. You know, currently if you have a TD portfolio, you can automatically sync your portfolio with options play. So you don't have to enter or, or, or close out any trades manually. Everything is synced automatically. Uh, we're working on Schwab next and we're currently working on trade station. And once we complete those three, we'll just simply do more. Um, so, you know, what we're constantly working towards is being able to pull in your portfolio, but also with trade station, you're actually going to be able to trade into your trade station account directly from options play. So as you look for ideas in options play, you can actually click the trade button and have it execute into your trade station account. So we're working on more and more trading features as well. And in, in addition to being able to automatically pull in your portfolio. Um, if the IV for a stock is typically low, for example, Comcast, where the cover call premium is low, instead of doing it for 35 to 45 days, should I do it for two to three months? Um, Colin, so, you know, from my perspective, I generally don't look at premium so much. I look at yield. Yield is more important than premium, right? So you can have a low premium, but that's okay as long as the yields look okay. Um, you know, and, and, I haven't looked at Comcast, you know, for example, but, you know, if you can double your income or I'm sorry, your dividend yield on a, on a cover call, it's worth pursuing. Um, so we'll take a call and come to our session next week, bring up Comcast as an example today. We'll look at it together and we'll go through it and show you whether or not I feel Comcast is a suitable candidate. You know, I would say Probably nine out of 10 candidates that I look at, generally speaking, are suitable for cover calls. Occasionally, there are ones that aren't, uh, meaning the income levels are just too low and not worth your while. And I'll show you when those opportunities are not worth your while so that you simply avoid that as well next week. Will you cover dividend capture on your cover call training? Yes, um, we will do a brief um uh, introduction as to what dividend capture means and more importantly how to avoid it or how to reduce that risk we'll cover that um, as well um you're absolutely right on the greed to get there first yeah you know I'm, this is what i mean when i when i refer to um tactical trading you know mindset and risk management is the best predictor of profitability a lot of traders, you know, simply approach options with the wrong mindset that, you know, hey, I want to turn $100 into $1,000. If you approach it with that mindset, I'm unfortunately going to say that there's a very small likelihood that you're going to succeed in the long run with that type of mindset of like, I'm, I'm here to try to chase those types of returns. You know, you, you can have periods of success with that type of strategy, but you're likely going to be followed with periods of losses, uh, significant losses, I would say. Um, with that as well. So, um, and this is really why this is the hardest part of tactical, uh, of, you know, tactically trading using options, because not only does it require, you know, a fairly significant skill set, you got to understand options trading, you got to understand market timing, you got to kind of have a basic understanding of fundamental analysis as well, right? So just the, the, the foundational knowledge that you need is, is higher than, you know, trading income. And then on top of that, you know, you need to have the right mindset and, and risk management techniques uh, that are absolutely critical to success. Meaning what I mean by that is that you could be the most knowledgeable options, uh, options. Um, you, you can be very knowledgeable on option concept, uh, concepts. You can be very knowledgeable on technical analysis, very knowledgeable on fundamental analysis, and still not uh, for a single quarter of your year be profitable. How is that possible? 
It's because trading has nothing to do with those three skill sets. Those three skill sets are required, but those three skill sets are not what def are not what generates profits in your portfolio. It's risk management and mindset. And I've done a whole month on just talking about trading psychology and mindset as well. Um, so for those of you that are members, I hope that you also take some time, you know, for those of you that are interested in tactical trading to go back and review that session. It's arguably one of my most important uh, summits that I've hosted on um, for those of you that are interested in trading uh, tactically on how to actually achieve success trading tactically. It is difficult um, and it takes a lot of time to develop the skill set to do so. Which is why I said, um, not everyone graduates to level three. Not everyone needs to graduate to level three. Not everyone wants to take the time uh, and effort because it is an incredible uh, amount of effort to actually achieve success with tactical trading. But for many of you, that's the pursuit. You have an interest in it. You you have a you have a the energy to pursue it. And I and I commend for those of you that do. Um, you know this. Uh, you know, in my 18 years of doing this, the first few years was a huge struggle in overcoming. And uh, first of all, even just understanding that it's not just you know understanding technical analysis and options trading is required for success. A lot of people think that oh, if I just learn more technical analysis, if I just learn more options, if I follow the right people, or if I subscribe to the right subscription service, I'm going to achieve profitability. And yet. You know, the vast, vast majority of the people that you talk to that do those things don't achieve success. That tells you why those things are not enough. Um, you know, and, and I try to break that down during my session on just that alone. Uh, the author on the book was the Options Playbook by Brian Overby. Um. If you want, uh, yeah, I actually have a video on how to connect your TD account um, with TOS. But if you just send us an email at info at optionsplay.com, we can show you, we can point you to how to uh, link or sync up your TD account with OptionsPlay. Um, for those of you that are in Canada, um, you know, can you get Canadian brokers attached to your platform to help Canadians? We are currently in the Canadian markets. You can subscribe to a Canadian version of Options Play. We recently just announced a new partnership with Quest Trade, where if you have a Quest Trade account, you can access Options Play, the platform, for free through the Quest Trade platform. Just to make sure everyone understands that doesn't give you access to any of the other services that we offer here at Options Play. It's just giving you access to the platform. Um, and your point about Canadian stocks certainly is true. You know, you're generally going to get lower levels of income on, on, on Canadian stocks. You're generally going to get better uh, liquidity, better um, income levels with U.S. stocks. That is absolutely true. Any other questions before I sign off today? Um, so not every TD account is moving over to Schwab on November 3rd. Some accounts are moving on November 3rd. Others are moving, you know, you know there, there are multiple tranches between November and March of next year. So you kind of have to understand where you are in that tranche um, of moving over. So we are in the process of supporting Schwab. We will be supporting Schwab as soon as we possibly can. We are actively working on that. With that, thank you so much, everyone, for your time. I hope that this was helpful and insightful and in giving you a better understanding of the core option strategies. And while today we didn't talk about any specific strategies and details of it, I think that having this overview is probably more important because sometimes we get so stuck in trying to learn a specific strategy and learn a specific way of trading that we forget the bigger picture. And hopefully this is a reminder of that bigger picture. So, you know, where do I start? And also perhaps where do you end? Not everyone needs to make it to level three. Many of you might just start with level one and stay at level one. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's largely where even successful traders spend most of their time anyway. Thank you so much. I hope you got a great trading day and I'll see you guys here on Monday for our Monday macro outlook session where I review what my views are for the market. And then I'll be back next Thursday to help you supercharge your options trading with income. Thank you so much and have a great trading day.